Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gear cogs. Great work. Items you pick up will go into your inventory. To open and close your inventory, left click the rucksack. To use an inventory item, left click it and then left click the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now the second gear. Perfect. You better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then when you are in the inventory, right-click the toolbox in order to examine it. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially left-clicking the first object, and then, when you have this item on the cursor, you left-click the second object. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done. Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony. Excellent. You are now ready. One last tip before. If you press the space bar, all interesting objects in the scene will be displayed. Good luck with your adventures in the Book of Unwritten Tales 2. I'm worried about you. Oh, Mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the Elf Kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. 
I only want what's best for you, Ivo. Have you seen this, Prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love? Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. And you really think it's appropriate for me to be locked in here too, eh? Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. I've been sleeping badly of late, and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. When Nate and the others lived here, Nate often made intimations that were to do with the bed. I don't know why, but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room and then it's replaced and planted in the garden. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. <sighs> Complete idiot. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the elf burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. 
He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. Cheap Cheap likes to look at his reflection. He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it and succeeds most of the time. Cheap Cheap survived our past adventure, even if he'll insist on exactly the opposite. He told everyone for months how he defended me from all the evils of the world and then only just escaped with his tail feathers intact. Hey, Cheap. Most birds love a mirror because they believe they can see another bird in it. You just love them because you can't get enough of yourself. I would be a bit less unbearable if I wasn't incarcerated in here. See you later. Yes, of course I'll be a good girl and stay in my room. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but some flowers are my favourite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. It may not be befitting of a princess, but this isn't the first time that I've climbed into the garden via the balcony, and it won't be the last. I, um, I'm just doing my morning exercises. I wasn't going to. Of course I could just ignore him and climb down into the garden anyway. He would, however, make a beeline to Mother and tell on me, and who knows what the two of them would cook up for me next. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things while... Cheep Cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. All the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing. With 
withdrawal symptoms. A contented, fat blue bird and his reflection. I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. to sleep. It got dark and he's simply... no matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. Let's go. As expected, no one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, mother is. <laughs> 